This morning's New York Times has new revelations about the NSA surveillance program. It includes previously unreported details about the collection of American emails and text messages in and out of the country. Here with us to discuss this and more is Trevor Tim, executive director of Freedom of the Press Foundation and an activist at EFF. President Obama uh, addressed the NSA surveillance program on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno this week. Let's take a look at how he framed things. Uh, a lot of these programs were put in place before I came in. Uh, I had some skepticism, and I think there's a, we should have a healthy skepticism mm -hmm. about what government's doing. I had the programs reviewed. We put in some additional safeguards to make sure that there's federal court oversight as well as congressional oversight, that there is no spying on Americans. Uh, you know, we don't have a domestic spying program. What we do have are some mechanisms where we can track uh, a phone number or an right. email address that we know is connected to uh, some sort of terrorist threat. There is no spying on Americans. Trevor, was President Obama giving the, quote, least untruthful answer there to use James Clapper's term himself? I mean, is he being less than honest in your opinion? Yeah, that statement is just unbelievable. unbelievable and it and it reeks of kind of this Orwellian newspeak. You know, he says, we don't have a domestic spying program. And then in the very next sentence, he says, we have mechanisms that can search Americans' phone records and for email addresses. So it's clearly, it's clear that we do. And, you know, again, it, when he talked to Jay Leno later in the clip, he says, we can't listen to your phone calls uh, or read your emails. And now we know with this New York Times story that is that is plainly not true. And so, you know, it's it's, Unfortunate that we have to parse through government statements, you know, a dozen times before we actually figure out what they're meaning to say with all of these uh, questions that they get. They're obfuscating and deflecting and deceiving the American public. So when somebody says, oh, are you reading the uh, emails of the American public? They'll say, we do not target the uh, emails of the American public, meaning that they target the people that they're talking to overseas, and that because they target those people, they can then go back and read all the uh, the communications they had with American citizens. And now we're seeing in court that this is not being used for terrorism at all. It's being used for a variety of other uh, cases. You know, there's a huge Reuters story the other day about how the DEA, the, the Drug Enforcement Administration, is taking NSA intelligence and giving it to local authorities uh, and state authorities and saying, uh, you know, this person is involved with drugs, you should uh, find an excuse to arrest him and then don't tell anybody that you're using our right. information. Trevor, on uh, that... It was just, it's just amazing. I want to ask you, in the article, there was a reassurance that was given, so to speak, by the spokeswoman uh, from the NSA. This is what she had to say. She said, the official said that a computer searches the data for the identifying keywords or other selectors and stores those that match so that human analysts could later examine them. The remaining communications, the official said, are deleted. The entire process takes a small number of seconds, and the system has no ability to perform retrospective searching. Do you believe that? And, and the reason I ask you that question is because it seems to me that each time there's new information given, first it was that the defense was, it's just metadata, it's just metadata. Then when it was argued that metadata could be more valuable in real time than the actual content because it could give you, you know, how many times a person communicated with another person, where they were, how long the communication lasted. And by virtue of just, you know, common knowledge, that's more important. But then once you have that information, presumably, once you have the power to abuse uh, the expectation of privacy, you're going to continue to abuse it if there's an opportunity to do so. Why do you think administration officials continue to lie? And why did Obama seemingly lie on Jay Leno to the American public? Yeah, it's really inexplicable. You know, it's it's really a shame that you know the quote that you just read. I'm going to have to go back and read that a half a dozen times to figure out exactly where they're obfuscating and where they're lying, where they're telling the truth. Because unfortunately, they can't just use straight up language that we can all understand uh, to figure out what's really going on here. And you know, I think that the big part of the New York Times story is this isn't talking about Prism, uh, which is the other uh, internet surveillance program. This isn't talking about. Uh, the phone records program. This is talking about a third uh, program that's actually much more dangerous in, in what uh, EFF has been alleging for six years in court. You know, we had a whistleblower come to us in 2006. His name was Mark Klein from AT&T. And he said that the NSA had set up a secret room in AT&T facility in San Francisco that splintered off 
uh, the fiber optic cables uh, in the AT&T facility and sent one copy to the NSA and, and the other copy kept continuing on the internet. And these fiber optic cables contain basically uh, all of the internet communications, whether it's uh, Americans communications or international communications. I'm just going to move my screen up a little bit here and you can see uh, this picture above me is a picture of the AT&T secret room that uh, was taken in 2006. Uh, and this uh, has been alleged to be happening around the country in 10 to 20 uh, different locations. This is the only one we have uh, documented proof of. But the, the next step in this whole, uh, this whole scandal is to get the NSA to admit that they uh, are splitting off communications because that's the, actually the only way that they could possibly do what uh, they allege to be do, are doing in the New York Times story today. We've had ed evidence of it mm -hmm. for years, but they have refused to confirm or deny. So uh, now it's finally time for them to come clean.